home and dry as Labour leader, and he's keeping his party's options open. All UN weapons inspectors to leave Iraq, the Americans are being pulled out now. Little rise in inflation in the final figures before next month's budget. And the port law eviction, objectors protest at the offices of Irish Nationwide. Good evening and welcome. Rory Quinn has won the leadership of the Labour Party by a margin of 10 votes. He defeated Brendan Howland, the party's chief whip, who was then elected unopposed as the new deputy leader. Afterwards, Mr Quinn pledged that there would have to be a general election before the Labour Party would return to government. Fishuk Bertie Ahern said he had valued Rory Quinn's cooperation in the past and looked forward to working with him in the future. Leaders of the other main parties also offered their congratulations. In the end, Rory Quinn's victory was much more comprehensive than even his supporters might have contemplated. A 10-vote margin, 37 to 27 for Brendan Howland. Rory Quinn was elected the new party leader and Brendan Howland was elected as a new deputy leader of the Labour Party. Rory Quinn attributed his victory in the main to his greater experience in government and in the party generally. But an important component was his capturing of the votes of Labour's women and youth groups, as well as those of the trade unions. At his formal press conference, he spoke of the change wrought in the party by Dick Spring. The days of division and divisiveness are long over in the Labour Party, and under my leadership, they will not return. Mr. Quinn said the task now facing him was to give relevance to Labour's values in a changing world, with a vision which would afford all an equal opportunity in life. But what if the current government collapsed and Fianna Fáil sought Labour's support? In the event of uh, the Fianna Fáil party losing the support of independence, and a request was made to the Labour Party uh, to form a new administration without a general election, I would be recommending to the parliamentary party uh, that we would not assist and that there should be a general election if the Fianna Fáil party cannot maintain its position in the law. So, like Dick Spring, was he ruling out coalition with Fianna Fáil after an election? I would be recommending to the party that we do not rule out any combination in advance of going into an election and that we would have one value overriding every other consideration, which would be <coughs> the maximisation of the implementation of Labour Party policy into legislative and economic and social reality. For his part, Brendan Howland spoke of the bruising Labour had experienced in two election setbacks. But there is a sense of vitality and a sense of determination in this party that only needs now to be ignited, and Rory Quinn will do that for us. However, the task facing the new Labour leadership is a daunting okay, one. Seats house. lost in the general election won't be easily regained. Rory Quinn says they've got to persuade voters that Labour in government does make a difference. Well, the new Labour leader inherits a party that is fairly united, despite those poor election results. We look now at Rory Quinn's political career and the direction in which he is likely to lead the party. The leadership battle between Rory Quinn and Brendan Howland seemed more like a friendly football match than a full-blooded knockout competition. It may have been billed as a contest between urban labour and rural labour, but in the end Quinn got the country as well as the city vote. Even the great ideological battle didn't materialise. Both candidates received support from right and left. So where to now for Labour's new leader? Often referred to as a smoked salmon socialist, Quinn seemed aloof from radical politics. His colourful ties and fondness for good food and wine may have raised eyebrows on the left, yet he was supported by left-wing Dublin TDs. Divorced and in a second relationship, he seems the embodiment of the Dublin 4 liberal agenda. For the moment, the left appears to be giving him the benefit of the doubt. He has pledged to reorganise the party. How many spin doctors he appoints may be the litmus test for the left. It was the apparent ring-fencing of Dick Spring with advisers which so antagonised Labour backbenchers. He is strongly of the European tradition of Labour parties and won't rule out going back into coalition with Fianna Fáil. But during an economic boom, it may be tempting to court the middle class. Some believe he should shift the party to the left. The way forward for it is to concentrate on its core constituency, which is Labour, the working class, disadvantaged people, and to build a base where it has a natural 
uh, support level, and it's not to go to, towards the centre to a group of middle-class voters who might vote for them in one election and not in the next. Under Labour's constitution, there can technically be another contest in about four years' time. According to one left-winger, that's an appropriate trial period for Rory Quinn. There are those on the left who will be anxious to see how much he champions the cause of the marginalised or tries to recapture the middle-class vote. The United Nations has begun withdrawing its weapons